Hey guys, today I'm going to be talking about another type of card I collect and it is this particular card, not um, from this set. So 7th edition was the first time foils existed and they are quite valuable. For instance, a regular Lord of Atlantis I believe is like 4 bucks maybe. A foil Lord of, Lord of Atlantis from 7th edition is 50 bucks I want to say, maybe more. Nightmare is pretty much worthless, but the 7th edition foil Nightmare is worth like 8 bucks. Darkness, again another card that's pretty much worthless, is worth 10 bucks in foil. Goblin King, which is like a dollar or two maybe, and foil 7th edition is worth 15 bucks I feel like. And this card is the card I just fell in love with. Um, this card is worth 20 bucks as a uncommon and again the card is worth like 10 cents. Even cards that are not like that great in foil, 7th edition or this card's worth like a buck or two and then disenchant is worth like 5 bucks. Oh there's, I mean honestly one of the greatest parts about this game for me is collecting. I don't play like as hardcore standard as a lot of you want me to. I'm definitely more casual now than I used to be and that's to me is okay. But one of the funnest parts about this game is finding a foil in the wild. And when I mean wild, I would define it as you didn't go online to buy it, you didn't buy it from your local game store, you didn't buy it from like a big strike zone online, you didn't buy it from Channel Fireball, you didn't buy it from a big store. You either pulled it yourself, which I'll get into a little later in this video, or you found it from somebody, like a trader, like a regular trader just like you. And that's the best part about it. The best part about it is when you get a appreciation when you can appreciate like this card, although I have no use, I don't play this deck, I don't have any use for it, but I can appreciate this card. I can even appreciate the Disenchant. I can definitely appreciate the Angels. And uh, the Nightmare is gorgeous, by the way. I've never seen a Nightmare this beautiful before. It's just fantastic. When you can find something like this it just makes me happy and I don't know why it makes me happy it just does trading for cards and I will sometimes overvalue these cards as well but trading for cards that I always wanted I always wanted a foil nightmare always I've always wanted a foil uh, goblin king and if because those were the cards that were good back in the day like nightmare used to be so good now it's like very bad but like Back in the day, it was really good and brings back so many good memories of you playing with your middle school or elementary school friends. I think 7th edition was in middle school, I want to say. And it just brings back so many awesome memories of, you know, the friendships you had back then and, you know, getting in trouble. Like, one of my um, friends had his magic deck, always had his magic deck recycled. Our English teacher would recycle Brendan's magic deck all the time. Like she would take the magic deck and put it in the recycle bin. And then Brandon would take it out and then she would put it back in. And it was crazy. But I, I mean, it just brings back so many memories. Like a nightmare. Like a regular nightmare, non-foil. I mean, that was good too because those are the cards I used. I didn't have any foil cards back then. And I was like, cool. Nightmare or Goblin King or uh, Lord of Atlantis or all of these cards meant so much to me back then because you don't I nowadays like I don't know if you guys know this but I open like a lot of boxes so it's not a big deal getting like a foil fetch land I mean it's kind of nice but it's not like a super big deal but back then when you got a foil nightmare when one of your friends gets a foil nightmare that's a big deal for everybody in that play group and that's what makes it I don't want to cry about it because I'm not going to cry about it but that's what makes I guess magic so special and these particular cards 7th edition is one of the sets I have the fondest memories about where you go sleeping over at a friend's house you watch a movie you play some magic you I think there's like a magic CD game that comes with like the starter set or something I remember this Sarah Angel I always wanted that card in foil but back then I just wanted a non-foil now I can 
but like I'm not never I'm not going to buy it. Yes, I can buy it. It'll cost like half a box, and that's okay because I just opened five boxes of dragons of Tarkir, and that's like not a big deal for me right now. But I want to find a card in the wild because it means so much to me. And a lot of you will comment and say, "Oh, you have all these cards. You have tens of thousands of cards." But there's honestly these cards mean a lot more than any of those cards I have. Be it a Tomogorf, be it a a Snapcaster. I these cards just bring back so many good memories and so many friendships and it's just a good time. And I wouldn't trade that. I would definitely not trade these cards, and I wouldn't trade that experience and those memories of Magic for you know cases of Dragons Tarkir because like that does. The set means very little to me right now. Maybe in the future it will mean a lot to me. But this set and foil, I mean, yeah. I don't know. I mean, is it, leave a comment below if there's a set like that for you. Um, it, it kind of wasn't beta because the beta I only opened two packs. So it wasn't like I was heavily playing Magic and I didn't have anyone to play Magic with. But 7th edition, I was in middle school and everyone was playing Magic. All my friends were playing Magic, so it meant a lot to me. And in my opinion, they are the most valuable cards to me and I would never trade them away.